Thank you very much, Sally. Good morning. Welcome to Kakaki Social. I am Ohimai Amaize. This is the segment of the show where we present to you the issues that are shaping debates and narratives in the Nigerian social media. Uh, immediate past governor of Ekiti State, Ayodili Fayoshe, is back on the trends again. This time around, that uh, there's an audio that surfaced yesterday uh, purportedly of his interrogation with the EFCC. Uh, but let's, uh, let's go to the social media and see how that generated some conversations yesterday. Uh, Fayoshe and EFCC, the game has been on between the two of them he turned himself in at the EFCC headquarters on Monday and he's been with the commission up till this moment uh, uh, facing interrogation let's take a look at uh, how this issue has been generating comments in the social media fire share still in our custody says EFCC uh, let's take a look at excerpts uh, from this report which was on NAN news agency of Nigeria yesterday uh, fire share still with the EFCC he's been interrogated uh, by the commission uh, after his uh, exit as governor of Ekiti State. Let's take a look at excerpts from this report. The head media and publicity of the EFCC, Mr. Wilson Uwujaren, disclosed this in a telephone interview with the news agency of Nigeria NAN in Abuja on Wednesday. Asked why Fireshell was still detained for over 24 hours, Uwujaren said, We are still not within range. We are not. We are still within range. We are not keeping him, but interrogating him. Uh, according to the EFCC, they are not keeping fire. They are simply interrogating him. Uh, fire says still with uh, the EFCC as we speak. Uh, we saw this report yesterday from Scan News. EFCC's illegality. Fire share refuses to sign EFCC arranged statement. Prefers prolonged detention. Attempts to confirm audio recording from EFCC has proved abortive. This audio you're about to listen to has been trending all through yesterday in the Nigerian social media. It has the voice of fire show. We cannot confirm the authenticity of the place and where this audio happened, uh, but it is being said that it happened during the interrogation of fire share at the EFCC headquarters. Let's listen to the audio and the comments uh, that followed from Nigerians. You are no court of law. You can't force me to say what I don't want to say. I've told you earlier, and I'm saying it again. It is only in the law court that I can get justice. The com your commission has showed you showed your hands to be partisan, to be to 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 prefer to bring me down at all costs, and that you will not get my cooperation. I believe the court of the land is still credible enough to give us fair hearing, not here. I'm not, I'm not going to write any other thing again. This is the last time I want to talk about that. Whether you bring me here again, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And I want to tell you, the best thing is I am ready to remain here as long as you want to keep me. I will not be intimidated by this, your, your incarceration. I will never be intimidated. Yeah, as you can hear from the audio uh, that you just listened to, the uh, immediate past governor of Ekiti State says he's ready to remain at the EFCC, uh, com at the commission's custody. Uh, he's not going to do anything more than what he has said already. Uh, this is the audio that has been trending in the Nigerian social media uh, from a, a most stormy tweeting. Whoever has the full audio, please release it. We don't want to hear Fireshell's part alone so we can be sure of the authenticity of this audio. In as much as I love his audacity, I don't want to be partisan. Uh, Nigerians also questioning the credibility of the audio we just listened to. Uh, we can tell from what we just heard that that is Fireshell's voice. But what we can tell is that uh, that happened at the commission has also been claimed also by, uh, by people on the social media right now. Uh, Fuye Baba tweeted, this audio is calm. I can bet it was pre-recorded before he submitted himself to EFCC. Why was it a monologue? Laugh one Kim you die. And let's take a look at uh, more comments on this issue yesterday, which has been trending from Banlas 001. I wonder the kind of people we elect in place of power. Please listen over and over again to this tape. This is a script tape. If you say it is a discourse, please with who? Only Fireshare was talking. And who leaked the tape? Was there someone there with fire share to be detained? Uh, these are real valid questions about the authenticity of the audio. And now we go straight to how fire share has set a new trend with his EFCC branded T-shirt. Lira Lainka is media aide posted this on Facebook yesterday. See Niger people, fire share don't bring new style. Go get your own. Hashtag we are not afraid of EFCC. Uh, let's take a look at these images which have flooded the Nigerian social media. Nigerians are already producing the fire share EFCC T-shirt in mass numbers and it's already on sale. 
from what you can see, uh, <laughs> Nigerians are rocking the EFCC. I'm here, t-shirt already. Fire share has set a new trend in fashion. Uh, take a look at uh, these are images of uh, this same t-shirt. Uh, Fire share was spotting this t-shirt on Monday when he turned himself in to the EFCC. Quite a uh, dramatic uh, situation that we saw on Monday. And uh, this has sparked off a trend in the Nigerian uh, fashion space already. We don't know how long this trend is going to be here for, but as at this point, this is what we are seeing. And of course, the governor of Kano State, uh, Abdullah Ganduje, had been at the center of controversy over the past few weeks. But yesterday, his media handlers came on the social media in an attempt to showcase his project and uh, some of the things that he has done. And the hashtag Gandun Aiki was trending in the Nigerian social media on Twitter yesterday. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the tweets that we saw on that hashtag. From his new media aide, Sally Hutanko Yakasai, we saw this tweet. Heichi Governor Uma Ganduje inspected equipment for the ongoing construction of a 3.5 billion era skills acquisition center being constructed by his administration. The construction work is over 90% and is expected to be completed and ready for commissioning by November 2018. Hashtag Gandun But some Nigerian social medias have also said that uh, uh, people who are not even from Kano State were part of those who were talking about his achievements, wondering if uh, this was not an attempt at damage control. Let's take a look at the tweets from Nigerians, why this was trending yesterday. These are the projects that uh, Sally Hutanko has posted on his Twitter page from Ozoeme now underscore non. So we saw this tweet. Nigerian social media influencers don't collect money. Oh, shaking my head. Hashtag Gandun Aiki. Let's take a look at more tweets yesterday. Why this was trending from a day caller dummy. What is this Gandun Aiki all about? Social media influencers don't collect a lot. Ne? God heal our land. Uh, this is this this hashtag was trending yesterday. Uh, ben underscore junior tweeted this trend. Gandun Aiki is nothing but damage control. Uh, of course, uh, and then from HB Quara, we saw this tweet. Uh, when did all these Yoruba people travel to Kano that they are tweeting Gadu Naiki? I thought Twitter is for Nigerians with clean and clear conscience until now. Uh, people who are said not to be from Kano State, like I mentioned earlier, with part of this uh, hashtag that was trending yesterday, as you can see from Otumba Afrobado. With all the constructions Governor Gadu Naiki laid his hands on, it shows he's really a man of God, uh, giving accolades uh, to the governor of Kano State yesterday. We move on from that now. It's Throwback Thursday. Today is Thursday, and we're having our Throwback uh, Thursday moment on this show. And we go back to a moment some months ago, actually, when the Prime Minister of Netherlands, Mark Rutte, uh, spilled his coffee while entering the parliament building. And rather than wait for the cleaners to clean it up, he took the responsibility himself and cleaned it up. Let's take a look at that video which trended heavily. It's throwback Thursday on Kakaki Social. Let's go back and take a look at that video. Uh, Mark Rutte, the Dutch Prime Minister, spilled his coffee and he cleaned it himself. Now, would your Prime Minister do that? This was from Deutsche Welle News Agency some months ago. Let's take a look at the video itself. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. example of leadership we saw there and still on our throwback Thursday moment uh, let's talk about patriotism in Nigeria how patriotic can you, are you can you really sing the national anthem uh, we go back to also this video that uh, broke the internet a couple of months ago uh, it's a version of the Nigerian nat national anthem let's take a look Arise to convention Nigeria you see our valala, we come and spend by the 
Lele, Sawa, and Lee, Whisper, Sean, Never, we say, the pledge. I pledge to my nation, my country, to the flavor. I don't want to for my country. I'm so glad. Oh my God! Say it! I pledge to my nation, my country, to the flavor. Loyal my country. I receive and give it to I pledge to my Amen. Say amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I guess after this show, I'm going to pose a national anthem challenge to Sally and TV. Uh? <laughs> okay, let's move on to entertainment where a uh, world renowned hip hop mogul Sean P. Diddy Combs has broken up with his girlfriend of 11 years, Cassie. This issue topped the trend yesterday. The whole world, everybody was talking about it. They've been in this relationship for the past 11 years, Cassie and P. Diddy, and they finally broke up. And guess who did he left her for? Did he left her for Canadian lingerie model Jocelyn Chu? And this has got the whole social media talking all through yesterday. Let's take a look at some tweets that we saw on social media. Cassie must get a lesson from Maria Carey on how to sue your ex for wasting your time. From the, this Twitter user, we saw that comment as Pura Maluda. And then from Big Underscore Culture, we saw this tweet. Cassie will, boun will, will bounce back with an Arab billionaire. Just watch. <laughs> Comments yesterday as news of Cassie and Didi break up filtered into the social media. Pinky Underscore Barboa, we saw this tweet. Uh, Cassie is young, attractive, and childless. Her best year are still ahead of her. She still has all the time in the world to marry another multi-millionaire and spend all of his money. This was one celebrator, the relationship that we saw uh, between Cassie and Didi. And then from Bad Mosakin, we saw this Twitter. Imagine if Cassie is from Ogun, Ondo, or Ikita State. And one Didi from Kwara now says he wants to break up with her after 11 years. <laughs> now, like these people, they run mad, though. <laughs> Interesting, because a lot of uh, people actually were hoping that Didi was going to marry her after that long relationship. Uh, from Maddie on the from Maddie Marvel, we saw this tweet always respected Didi in how he handled his relationship with Cassie. He said publicly several times that he would never marry her because he knew he would never be faithful. Dude was 100% honest from the jump. So everyone knew what they were signing up for. Nobody's a victim here. Uh, feminists have also come to say the lady is a victim in this whole arrangement. And of course, uh, this very funny meme we saw yesterday, Cassie saying to Didi, baby, when are we getting married? Where is this our relationship going? PDD, after 11 years, take a look at how PDD responded. We ain't going nowhere if you know, you know. And of course, it's not the first time Didi is going to be breaking up in the very uh, well-known celebrity relationship. Didi has broken up with J-Lo also a couple of years ago. And as we wrap this segment up, we take a look at uh, this uh, video that surfaced yesterday. Uh, we saw this trending video of uh, a hawker in suit who was hawking granuts. And this made quite uh, um, some interesting thing to talk about. Corporate granite hawker spotted somewhere in Africa selling granite, wearing suit and carrying briefcase. Well, let's take a look at the video. <laughs> I guess this was the informal economy that uh, Professor Kingsley Moalu was referring to. <laughs> Granite seller in suit that we just seen. And of course, one of the holy, by, holy, holy scriptures says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it well. This is how we wrap it up this morning on Kakaki Social. Follow the conversation on all our social platforms at Kakaki Social on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on our YouTube channel, uh, Kakaki Social. I am Ohimai Amaiza, your anchor of this segment. Handy you over right back now to Sally and Utibe. Thank you so much, Ohimai. It's amazing how we don't pay um, we don't pay attention to little details. For instance, the national um, anthem and of course other identity. It's quite amazing. Definitely. Thank you. Sally. Thank you so much, uh, Ohimai.